Welcome all to another Let's Play as we're working through uh, Looking Glass Studios catalog. I uh, recently did Terra Nova. I'm also working on Flight Unlimited this week, the whole series. Um, since there's no real plot to those games, I'm just going to kind of play a couple hours of each and talk about them uh, and put, put a video up. Uh, but now we're working on Thief Gold. Um, I just kind of wanted to get into this game and start sinking my teeth into it. Uh, and we're running the T-Fix patch, the newest version of the T-Fix patch. It works best with Thief Gold. I'm, I've heard it works okay with the Dark Project. It's just that getting a hold of the Dark Project files, getting them installed correctly, can be a bit of a chore. Thief Gold at least comes straight off of Steam. Plus, there's a lot of extra content in Thief Gold that's going to be fun. One of my favorite additions to Thief Gold, actually, is... It's not even a new level. Well, there's one new level that's great. It's the Opera House. But there's also the... Uh, additions to Constantine's Manor. Um, actually, I think it's the replenishment of cut content. Uh, or not replenishment, the, uh, the reintroduction of cut content. But uh, Constantine's uh, Manor, or Constantine's, Constantine's house is uh, kind of fucking crazy. Like, it was already crazy in the Dark Project, and it's uh, absolutely insane in this one. So I'm really excited to get into this. Um, Alright guys, so without further ado, we're going to watch the intro. Most of the cutscenes, unless there's stuff to read on screen, I will not be talking over because you must bask in the splendor that is Thief. Even though it's dripping with a lot of 90s ness, this game is still just exudes fucking cool. Uh, and I don't think it ever won't. It's, it's kind of timeless, weirdly. Even though it's very much a product of its time. Um, yeah, Thief uh, 1, Thief the Dark Project, Thief Gold, uh, is actually my least favorite in the, in the core Thief series. Of Thief uh, Dark Project 2 and um, Deadly Shadows. Um, that's largely due to the fact that there's so many missions with like a ton of zombies and stuff like that. And zombies, if you don't have holy water, are hard to take out. Holy water is a sort of a rare resource. It's not everywhere. You have to buy it before the missions and you can get pretty screwed if you don't have enough of it. Plus, it consumes your water arrows, which are a more useful tool for other things. So it's a whole fucking thing. But... I think it's, if you're going to be a fan of Thief, you know, I didn't realize this until I actually sat down and played the Dark Project. Uh, if you play Deadly Shadows, you play Thief 2 The Metal Age, for some reason, like 80% of the lore of this entire franchise is laid down in this fucking game. 
Um, so if you want to be a fan of uh, the Thief series and you want to know what's going on and who's who and what's what and where Garrett came from and who the Keepers are and what the whole deal is, um, you got to start here. I mean, I hadn't even heard of the Hammerites until I played Thief Deadly Shadows. I was like, who the hell are the Hammerites? What is that? I've heard of the Mechanists. I haven't heard of the Hammerites. So um, uh, most of Thief's lore is really laid down in this game. Um, so we're going to be doing Expert Difficulty. Uh, and we're going to do the training because it's actually part of the story. Uh, a lot of the lore building starts in the training, so we're going to start there. And we're doing... Ex I usually go hard uh, because I, I feel like it gives you most of the same um, objectives as Expert does. But Expert just gives you just those few more that's going to make us have to explore every level um, ad nauseum almost. And we're going to see everything that hopefully everything that Thief Gold, ha Gold has to offer, uh, but the going will get tough in a couple places because this is not an easy game. Um, so let's go ahead and start training. The essence of balance is detachment. To embrace a cause, to grow fond or spiteful, is to lose one's balance. After which, no action can be trusted. Our burden is not for the dependent of spirit. Maya, the third keeper. I was a kid. No parents, no home. Running messages and picking pockets to keep my ribs from meeting my spine. One night I saw a man. Folks just passed him by like he wasn't there. I thought he must have something valuable, so I snuck up on him and made a grab. That's not for you. Please, sir, I'm hungry. Don't tell the hammers, I promise. What is your name, boy? Garrett. You have talent, lad. Let go of me, old man! To see a keeper is not an easy thing. Especially one who does not wish to be seen. We have a need for those as gifted as yourself. If you've grown tired of how you live, then follow me, and we will show you a different way. Leave me alone! As you wish. I caught up with him just before he vanished into the crowd. It was the beginning of a very long education. I do miss <clears throat> back in the 90s where the training missions weren't just about teaching you the controls and stuff like that. They were also crucial parts of the story. Even in Half-Life, you know, the explanation for where Gordon Freeman got any sort of weapons training, you know, how he knows about, you know, some of the ancillary parts of the facility and how to get into access hatches and how to do this and how to do that and blah, 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 all comes from those training missions. And... This was pretty ubiquitous in games around this time period. I'd say from like 97 to like 2003, 2002, uh, pretty much every first person shooter that was like sort of story based would have a training mission that wasn't just like, here, throw a grenade, here, shoot a thing. There, there was typically some story in it as well. Um, and I think probably Thief the Dark Project's one of the, the prime examples. Oddly enough, so, you know, one of the weird things about Thief 2 is that it's, in my opinion, it, it seems like such a perfect game almost. There's not a single level in Thief 2 that I don't like. There are many in this one that I don't like, and there's a few in, in Deadly Shadows I don't like. But Thief 2, there's not a single level I don't like. But, apparently, that was rushed like hell. And that's probably one of the reasons there's not a training mission. They just start you off like, yep, you should know how to do this by now, assuming you've played the first game. But at least, at least this game has an actual uh, training mission. So let's get into it. I'm just Welcome, gonna check the controls Garrett. real quick. In the nearby rooms, I will okay, instruct I, yeah, you I had the various to skills you controls. will need to survive. Please stay in the entrance area. One Take thing each I don't like about I explain the room's oh, purpose. No. Okay. When you are ready to, to begin go. your lessons, proceed down this All hallway right, to the first room. That looks good. Everything looking good. Uh, jump. Okay, and frame rate is looking super nice. I was having issues with that earlier. I don't know, there's... My CPU is being weird. Um, okay, it looks like my set... Wait, hold on. I pressed expert, didn't I? Oh, because we're training, that's why. All right. 
All right, guys, and uh, another thing, like I said, you know, like, uh, so, believe it or not, you see this level design right here? This, they actually, uh, the Keeper Library, because see, those are books up on the wall. So the Keeper Library in Thief Deadly Shadows uh, is modeled after this. It looks a lot like this. Um, and actually, as bad as Thief 2014 was, at least there were a few homages to the original series. Uh, the the underground library place underneath the bordello uh, that you have to go into is is pretty much the Keeper Library from Thief of Deadly Shadows, which is this place, uh, part of the Keeper Compound. And of course, uh, your the most interaction you're ever going to have with the Keepers in the whole franchise, really, or, or no, excuse me, until you get to Thief 3, is these, this training mission and a couple of other things in this game. So that's why it's it's vital to your your sort of internalization of the lore of Thief to play Thief 1. Plus, I mean, it's a good game, and Lord Baffert's Manor is a pretty boss mission. That's going to be the first one we're going to... Hold on. I didn't put Shift as Crouch, but then again, who cares? I'll pro I might change that to Walk later. You must learn how to move unseen. Stay in the shadows. Avoid the light. The indicator on your screen will tell you how visible you are. Try to reach the top of the platform without being seen. By the way, I really love... Let's let's take a look here real quick. Look at all the little detail here. These starry ceilings are actually more Arabesque than they are medieval, like uh, European medieval. But they sort of crept their way into to bits of... Uh, European medieval um, architecture because of the Crusades and then of course like the uh, uh, the Moorish invasion of Spain and things like that so um, it's just cool to see it here it's already starting to show you how they're blending genres they're like yeah this is not just like me normal medieval Europe this is something different so then of course we're gonna do this god I love this series i was gonna say this game but you know well here's the thing well I, done i did not see you approach i may have a new Open appreciation this for this game when the door is near the center of your screen see, this is one of my favorite that it is places in all of the thief franchises look at this doors and other objects this is very Use arabesque them. this is very sort of uh Good. moorish or Proceed middle eastern down this architecture for your next test and it's quite frankly it's beautiful and that's what I'm saying. You know, one of the things I really love about Looking Glass Studios is look at the look at the texture work they've done. Like, this is shit geometry, and this is shit color depth, and yet they still put a bunch of artistry into it to make it look gorgeous. They just made it work. You know what I mean? And I'm, you've really got to hand it to them for that. Like I said, I'm going to have a whole... Well, like I said, in another video of mine I mentioned, I'm going to have a whole video I'm going to do about... If you look at this texture work, this is using um, actually the technique of impressionism um, because they were so limited on resources that you just have to put color splotches in and the further you back away from it, the more it seems to resemble something from reality but the closer you get it just becomes like a mishmash of color. And this is not a fantastic example of it, Thief 2 is much better, but this is sort of why I'm a purist about old school textures, because especially from venerated developers, because these people knew what they were doing. And when you just upgrade it with a texture pack where it's like, I'll just pick, take a picture of a stone archway and put it here in 8K resolution. It's like, yeah, it'll look more like a stone archway, sort of, but it clashes not only with the entire visual design, but also, well, that's the thing. It clashes with everything else. It clashes with the geometry. The geometry is very rudimentary, and impressionistic and so are the textures so I'm actually getting basically my mind is filling in the gaps here for what this should look like rather than looking at it one-to-one -one and being like hmm that looks like shit that looks like shit that look no I don't think it looks like shit because my mind is filling in the blanks my imagination is helping me to uh, figure out what the artists intent was and my argument is that uh, only up until recently we've needed these techniques in gaming to convey an artist's vision. However, recently in gaming, I think a, a really great example is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, um, if you look at the concept art, it's pretty much one-to-one -one what they rendered in the game. So now we don't no longer need these techniques because an artist can just be like, yeah, I want 35,000 skulls over here and three, you know, piles of Spanish gold doubloons here and I want a blood 
mark across this wall and I want like little insects crawling out of here. Like they can say whatever they want and they'll get it because we have the fidelity of graphics now, but they didn't back then. And honestly, I, I'm really getting an impression of like this sort of like, these guys seem like they're clearly rooted in sort of European medieval society type place, right? But there's an air of mysticism and worldliness about them because of this strange architecture that's clearly from a different culture. Um, which means that these people are open-minded and they're learned and they are seeking knowledge. I mean, it just it's already doing some storytelling right here. So I'm sorry to get stuck on a hallway so much, but this is one of my favorite hallways in all of Thief. I promise the whole place is going to be like this. Now you must learn to move quietly. Some surfaces are louder than others when walked upon, and moving quickly makes more noise than moving slowly. Listen to your own footsteps to hear how much noise you are making. The instructor will have his back turned. You must get to the top of the platform without being heard. See, there's nothing like this in Thief 2. You just kind of have to know. That's why it's weird that I started with Thief 2 because I meddled through all this stuff and had to figure it out on my own. This woodwork, these woodworking textures, once again, they're conveying a, a general impression of what it should look like. Um, but another weird thing about Thief, these are all very Victorian. These are not medieval. So that's where the steampunk sort of aspect comes from here. I did not hear you. Robert. Very good. I did not hear you traverse the room. Oh, traverse the room. Beyond this door is a hallway that will lead you to your next task. A lot of people don't realize this, but uh, this is Dark 1. Dark 2 came out for Thief 2 and eventually System Shock 2. There's no colored lighting in this game, um, which actually limits them a lot, which is why the texture works lo looks a little wonkier in this one than it does in Thief 2, because in Thief 2, not only did they have um, an engine to support higher res textures, they also didn't not, they didn't need to try and create the illusion of color from lighting with texture work. They could just put in the actual colored lights that they want. Now get your weapons. To pick up objects, select them by centering them on screen until they light up. Then use them. Choose your weapon now. Try readying your sword and then your bow. You can always put them away again. I don't if you think need I got no. Free. I didn't go. I didn't opt for the now upgraded let's go texture. Out to the so that's for some target practice. Ready your bow. Knock an arrow and draw back the string by holding down the attack button. Make sure you draw all the way back, or your shot will not have full power. There we go. That's a pretty good. Take shot. aim, and when you are ready to shoot, release your attack. See if you can hit one of these targets. Good shot. Keep practicing if you wish. When you are ready to proceed, approach the training dummy and ready your sword. Oddly enough, that's kind of how real the archery works. The attack button. A quick tap will give you a slash. Move the tip of your sword to the left of the target for a left slash, and to the right of the target for a right slash. Hold the attack button down, then release for an overhead swing. Try both slashes and the overhead swing on the practice dummy. Good job. You're ready for a live opponent. To practice against your partner, enter the cobbled sparring area. So a lot of people don't know this. This game originally started as a... Uh... See, I'm supposed to be running right now. That's the thing. This is running. I guess... Why is he so slow? I'm going to check my controls real quick. Hold on. Uh, controls, customize controls. W, walk forward, X. Yeah, I did put that in there. Backward shift is what did I put shift as? Where's crouch? Where the hell is crouch? Oh, toggle crouch, yeah. Control keep it. I don't know why shift is shouldn't be mapped to that anyways this sh oh pff, I forgot duh yeah um, yeah okay that makes a lot more sense now all right yeah so this actually this game actually started as dark Camelot which became the dark project um, and it was a, it initially supposed to be a 3d uh, sword fighting slash fencing simulator and they were even considering going VR with it so um, that's why there's things like the block. That's why there's things like if you go to the left, you do a left slash. If you go to the right, you do a right slash. All that kind of stuff. Um, 
The thing is, is I have tried to block and, and actually fence in this game, and it's just not possible. I don't think it really worked too well. But they said that the original fencing... Um, hold on, let me check something. Okay, we're, we're good. Yeah, they had said that the original fencing uh, system that they had actually worked pretty well, and they were pretty happy with it, but... They couldn't get other things about the game to work, and they did have a stealth mission, and then that's kind of how history was made, because I think it was Paul Narath said something about, like, hey, that stealth mission's pretty cool. Why don't we uh, build off of that? So... Well done. Keep sparring if you wish. When you are done, leave the sparring area. Oh. See, they tried to have things like trying to angle your attacks, like... See, and I did, that always bugged me about the guards in this, like they can come up to you like this and then, like, they can just basically run at you at the tip of their sword and hurt you, you can't do the same thing. That's enough sparring for today. Please walk over to the table. Would you care for some refreshment before we move on? I guess so. Do I have Please a pick up all of the items on this table. Cycle through your inventory to see the objects you have in your pockets. Once an object is displayed, you may use it. Oh, I forgot the dummy. Have something down there. to eat if you wish. Then you may proceed. The next test is waiting on the other side of the metal door. Okay, well, let's the door is locked, but the key from the table will open it. To unlock the door, select the key in your inventory. Wait, I forgot he goes Center in the there. I think you can follow him too. And... Then use the key on the door. Also, I think uh, this is, you know, in Thief 2, there are no daytime missions. There's this one and uh, one of the mines and something else, and that's pretty cool. Daytime missions in stealth games are Good. always, now like, kind of cool, to get in my to your opinion. Next test. Also, this is very sort of Romanesque, you know what I mean? And this, look at the, the ceiling texture here and these, like, this looks very Romanesque. It doesn't look... Uh, European media. Well, that's not now really. You will learn new movement skills first. That's not really the true because uh, the Romans were all over uh, Northern Europe, so that doesn't mean that there wouldn't be. You know, like Britain has a ton of. Move like, while looking shit. up or down to climb up or down the rope. Turn to change your facing. If you jump again, you will release the rope. Now climb the rope to get to the top of the platform. I always well, like going down, down here. And jump across the gap to the other side of the stream. Good For jump. For some reason, I always think there's stuff down here. But there never is. I don't know why I always look. You know. And just call me, yeah, call me whatever, but I, I love training missions like this in games. Um, and I miss them a lot. I mean, remember Half-Life, Opposing Force, Tomb Raider, uh, Red Faction, the Thief series. Uh, I'm trying to think of some others. I think Soldier of Fortune had one. This that was pretty cool. This is easy to climb if you know how. First, move close to the wall. Next, jump to grab the edge of the wall and pull yourself up. Good job. The keepers I'm most pleased with your progress. Them, you have passed the I last test for today. For if you wish, skills. you may stay to practice your climbing and jumping, or swimming, ducking, leaning, or crawling. That was way shorter than I remember. Leprosy? Especially if you play Thief Deadly Shadows, so much of Thief Deadly Shadows is like direct callbacks to this one. The most promising accolade left us, not out of the lesser folly of sentiment, but the greater folly of anger. His heart was clouded and his balance was lost, but his abilities unmatched. Even then, we need to watch him most carefully. Keep our hands. I have a simple job planned for this evening. 
Break into a guarded mansion, steal another fat nobleman's priceless trinket, and leave quietly. Lord Bafford is out of town, and rumor has it that the captain of his house guard went with him as a bodyguard. The time is ripe for a bit of burglary. The front gate of Lord Bafford's manor is always guarded, and the main street is far too exposed. But Cuddy tells me there's a better way in, around to the side, more out of the way. One guard, and likely no witnesses to complicate matters. The piece Cuddy wants is a scepter, silver, jewels, the usual adornments. It should command a high price. Bafford, like most of his kind, probably keeps his treasures on the top floor of the place, close to his heart, and far from his servants. No point in waiting. I have Cuddy's old sketches of the place, and everyone who's going to be asleep inside already is. It's time to begin. Dude, Stephen Russell's fucking voice is as rich as Corinthian leather. I used to be really good at impressions. I used to be really good at mimicking voices and uh, particular sounds and all sorts of stuff like that, but I've never been able to do a good Stephen Russell Garrett. Never in my life. Because, uh, the, and here's the thing, when you, when you hear him speak in public, he talks like this. He's like, oh, hey, yeah, it's good to meet you. I'm glad you're a fan. I'm glad you're so good. But then when he's in the game, he's like, yeah, I'm Garrett. I'm gonna go steal shit and blah blah. He's just got this like this incredible range with his voice, and he just brings it all the way down. But he doesn't lose any uh, uh, oomph to it, and he's able to project that sound and everything like that, and take on the character. And he just acts Garrett so perfectly. So yeah, sorry. All right, difficulty expert, Lord Bafford's Manor. Uh, pretty standard mission. This is like, if you've ever seen a video about Thief, this is the only fucking level they ever show. Sneak into Lord Bafford's Manor and case the place. The well house in back is your best bet if you can get the key from the guard. Blackjacking or pickpocketing him would be quietest. Find Lord Bafford's prized jewel scepter and redistribute it to yourself. Try to do it without causing too much commotion. In addition to pinching the scepter, steal 700 worth of valuables while you're in the manor. Don't kill anyone while you do the job. No servants, no guards, no pets, no one. Once you've achieved your other objectives, get out of the manor house and back to the city streets. Let's get it done. All right, as always, water arrows are basically the name of the day. Who gives a shit about broadheads? As long as you got a blackjack and a belt load or a quiver full of water arrows, you're good to go. So I'm just going to blow my wad on water arrows. Um, and we're going to play the mission. Hey, I'm going to the mm. no one to come with. A few too many to try to get by here. This is no place for you. The bear pits. I don't know if I've ever heard that conversation in, in its entirety because I usually just fuck off to go like start the mission or uh, yeah I spook them like that. So we'll see. Anyways, I yes. So I remapped all the keys to be like thief too because I'm very comfortable with that control scheme. So just wanted to make sure they worked. check my map real quick that's uh, indecipherable so I'm just gonna map it out as I go what's well, this is one of the few missions in all of thief where you can just kind of like walk around and do shit and like with impunity because you're just a dude and they're not the cops and also you know it's a free country man Sorry guys, it's just been such a long time since I played this, I really am just uh, trying to map everything out, because, um... I was just thinking too, I was just like, okay, what cool stuff is in this one that's not in uh, Thief 2? And it's like, not very much. They really had to rack their brains to add shit to Thief 2, and honestly, the few additions that they made, like, weapons-wise and stuff, are kind of lame. Those frog beast things, oh, we're just gonna save and go down here. I forgot what's down here, so... I don't know if it's something horrifying. 
There's a lot of horrifying shit in Thief uh, 1. Yeah, the, the ones I'm not... Down in the Bone Horde's not too bad, because you can run past most of the zombies. There's no human enemies. Um, I don't like the beginning of the prison, but I think that's just because, like, the first time I played it, I was really young, and it scared the shit out of me. Um... Aha! I've never taken this route in my life. Oh, and there's a the guard. That worked out pretty well. And into the drink we go. Oh yeah, I did play this recently and I remember this like goes on forever for some reason. I'm glad I turned the gamma up because I keep forgetting that the recording is so dark. And I'm just going to check that again real quick because I just want to make sure that it's because like not only will my record software darken everything up like crazy, I think that's a good medium. But, uh, so will YouTube's, uh, compression and their own render or whatever they use. And I keep feeling, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go down here. I feel like there's something down here. I think this was a, oh, I fucking hear spiders, god damn it. Fucking spiders. See what I'm talking about? Like, already right off the bat, there's like, I gotta deal with fucking, like, spiders and shit. You know? And since I'm in here, I might as well pick up something for myself. Yes, you might. Sorry, now I'm getting used to the old controls. I'm in a constant state of running now. Um, in this one. Oh, yeah, that's a weird one. Like, the, the running controls for some reason in Thief Gold are fucked up and I don't know what the problem is so um, this is why most fan missions are made in Thief 2 um, I remember trying to play a couple of fan missions and, and even play Thief Gold a few months ago and I was having a lot of trouble because you have to be careful about how you map the controls with run and movement and all that kind of stuff because they're just they're a little wonky compared to vanilla Thief or vanilla Thief 2 and if that's what you're used to playing, it's going to be kind of a rude awakening. Okay, so I'm going to go. I think there's something in that crevice, right? All right, no, nothing there. But at least, you know, I'm testing my acrobatic skills. Still, still got it. Inside at last. The sir could really beef up security, so. What do you mean? What's wrong with us? Well, we're fine. But I've been thinking we should watch the outside. That's stupid. People don't worry about their on the inside. No, then you catch them before they get inside, you taffer. Oh. By the way, Stephen Russell is the voice of most of the stupid guards. Right, we're gonna make some hard saves too, just so we have some. Get this guy out of the way. Yeah, Lord Bafford's Manor is a cakewalk. Well, this part is, at least. Because they're still teaching you the controls and stuff. Um, upstairs, I mean, it's not hard, but it definitely, you know, they, they throw a lot of the, the game's sort of subtleties at you, like tiled floors and things. Here's a metal floor. 
So good little level design like that, like, you know, first time player might hit that and be like, bagang, bagang, and then like the guards would be like, what was that? Right. I usually throw him around here somewhere, just wherever it's darkest. And then I try and raid the shelves. But is if I'm if I recall correctly, there's not a whole lot down in this particular part. I remember as a kid being like, okay, what is this for? This must be important. Where does the canister go? You know, I'm so used to like like every other game like oh my god this has to go somewhere like there's a socket in the wall for it i have to find it and like not realizing it's just a it's just an object in the game it doesn't have to necessarily be to anything this is pretty cleared out if only we didn't bathe so frequent like i don't know if that's this one or the next one Right, I think that's, I mean, is there anything over here? No, it's just a fucking wooden bowl. <gasps> yeah, there's nothing. All right, time to go upstairs. Start. Let's get that apple in case we get hungry for later. Is that six flat? The other problem I have with the, the first two Thief games is that your inventory doesn't carry over. So it's like, if you don't start making use of these tools, you're screwed. I mean, honestly, back for 98, for a fucking stealth game that could have just been a linear affair, this is pretty advanced shit, like moving boxes around and they have like actual physics and shit. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, there's nothing behind there. Let's go up here and see what we can see. Music is so spooky in this level, even though it's not, it's not really that big of a deal. <laughs> Come over here, lady. I'll get you. There's three of them. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm gonna let sleeping dogs lie for right now. I don't think there's anything in there either. Man, the lean buttons in these games, so nice. I'm just gonna double check that there's nothing in the in the room with the sleeping guy. Just keep my distance is all. Nope, think we're good. There's also just something about, like, mastering the controls for a game and just being, you know, just, like, it's an extension of yourself. You don't have to, like, think about it or anything. I was playing Terra Nova recently, and god, the controls in that game are a little tough to get used to. I hit that stupid lantern? Come on, man. Hopefully no one comes in here. All the apples and cheese I can eat. That was another thing that tripped me out when I was a kid, when I was playing this. I was just like, why can't I eat everything? What am I gonna... I felt like it was encouraging me to get into combat, because I'm like, oh, I can restore my health through eating, so I must need to fight all the time. That's why there's so much food. A lot of this is just for immersion, and it's also a nice little mechanic, you know, in case you need to, uh, whatever. Yeah, there's a note somewhere about this, but I got it. Let's see. I think the note's over here. Cedric, please speak to the cook about last night's dinner. Well, while technically the menu conformed to my instructions, I suspect that the lamb was somewhat older than this spring's, and I am in no way fooled by his practice of warming the salad to disguise wilting. If cook is incapable of finding adequate ingredients, he can be replaced. 
And if he offers those same excuses about the stone market shortages, please remind him that the grocery budget is a good 50% above last year's figures, and even he should be able to procure adequate vittles at those prices. All right. That's what I'm saying, like, uh, much like Hitman, they always make you hate the people you're stealing from, so you feel a little justified in whatever you're doing. There's a drunk guy over here. He's probably upstairs. Let's check out what's in this other door and then we'll proceed upstairs and start stealing everything we can find. I'm not super crazy about the next mission, but it's not the end of the world either. Okay, I think I know where that one goes. Oh no, I've been up here. Okay, never mind. I know there's going to be one level late game that's going to be an absolute bitch on expert because you have like zero time, like just a bunch of enemies after you, you have zero time to react or plan or do anything. I usually like to take this well what we're gonna see so I'm gonna save real quick and also don't ever forget to do this all the time 90% of all the secrets in this game are hidden yeah do not go in there nobody's here yeah nothing is making noise nobody don't worry about it Get some bread, an apple, and an apple, and a worthless plate. But you know what else we can do in here? We can take all the banners down and find all the secrets they contain. I swear to you guys, one of these banners is gonna have something in it, and then you're gonna you're all gonna feel silly for having doubted me. get his torch no it's an electric light so I gotta find another way to get around him this is the outstair or <laughs> outstairs this is the outside so when I want to get back out on the street this is where I go I'm trying to remember if there's a, anything I can grab out here like some loot or something Part of me thinks you have to open this from in there and then use this route to get out, but we'll see. I think I know where that gate leads. It's like the very beginning of the level. In any case, let's get back into the manor and steal some loot. Now we're starting to get into it. I'm 
think those are worth anything. Is the art worth anything? Is this one? Nope, just those then, I guess. So we're going to save real quick. Go over here, open this door. Sealed right here, so we'll see. What do I see? Let me get another hard save real quick. Let's go after this guy. <laughs> so, hey. nice. Two guys down. Gotta hide these guys somewhere. I mean, this is not the best spot, but I don't think any. Oh, that's not true. There's a. I think there's a patrol that comes through here. But I don't want to use up my water arrows necessarily. So. So again, I like the architecture in uh, these little rooms too. Like this one especially. Very nice. Very cool. Objective complete. What was the objective I just completed? Oh, only 700 in loot. Damn. Lots of groaning sounds in Thief. For reals. Okay. Come on. Come with me. Should be fine right there. So, I think I remember one of the secrets right now. We're gonna go up here. I think there's a guard down there, so we're gonna be cautious as we approach. But we're gonna take this thing out. Nope, it's not there. But I think that, ooh. Good thing I assigned X to walk. Cause you still need a walk button occasionally in Thief if there are tiles anywhere. patrolling on those balconies but we're gonna go over here and just double check don't know where he is It's not that one. Not there. Not there. <sighs> oh, I forgot Garrett. If a ledge is too thin, he does not like to crouch on it. I'm gonna walk at normal speed. I'm not gonna do the tap walk thing because I don't think there's anyone close enough to hear it. Okay. I think it's this one then. Have at thee! <gasps> Yeah, always take off all of the, the stupid uh, tapestries and banners and whatever you can. 
Do I even have a rope arrow? I don't think so. So I'm gonna save real quick. Who real quick. There? Nobody's there. Don't worry about it. There? No. Oh, well. Who could possibly be there? My friend. Nobody could possibly be up here. Hello? Anyone there? And there's nothing up here, so. Let's see. No, there is no rope arrow. I literally have to drop down to the ground. And there are no moss arrows. So we're gonna make a hard save here because this guy's gonna be a little bit of a bitch to take out. Got that guy. <laughs> it's a throne room. How pretentious can you get? Apparently this pretentious. Here we He's got go. The scepter. Sweet. It's always so random, like, how much health you do or don't get from eating. That's one thing that always bugged me about the eating in this game, is that it's, like, very RNG. Oh, yeah, this is before lockpicks. You don't get them till a little bit later. Another hard save, just because we that we pulled that off pretty well. Where's this guy going? Please don't go this way. <clears throat> Thought I saw something. <clears throat> nice. I'm not done with this place. We are going to loot this place absolutely blind. We are going to take every last thing we can from here. I like how this is a mechanic in Thief that you're like, I have to jump between pads of carpet. Who goes there? Nobody goes anywhere. Just relax. Everybody just take a, take a pill. Don't see anything now. <laughs> Strange noise. Ah! Uh, was it the, I guess it was a quick save. I don't remember. Yeah. You know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take him head on like the last guy. That seemed to work. Cause if I have to cross that tile, I'm fucking screwed, man. I'm pretty excited for Constantine's Manor, but also I don't know. We'll see how it goes. What's that? Hey, you can go in there with your buddy. You guys can have a party in there. I left some uh, liquor for you, so you'll have something to do. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> Made a ton of noise. Ooh, a nice ring. already came through here. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll have to check. We'll have to double check. Nothing in there. Over there. Nothing's over there. Just everyone. Oh, 
sure was nothing, buddy. Is there any fire arrows yet? No. Somebody's coming close. Is it <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta, I gotta get the drop on him faster. I think I can do it right here. Yeah, this should be fine. Just do a little U-turn. Who's there? Hey! Nobody's there. Okay, just get out of my way. <laughs> Got him before his. Nothing's going on. Why do you keep asking? I don't know why I'm trying to conserve all the arrows. I keep telling myself and you guys and everybody that you can't take it with you. <laughs> you know? But I want to be the, the pharaoh of thief. Oh, I am going to hide for long. Don't you worry, dude. Nobody's finding anyone. Will you now? I'll find you. Watch for assassins. The night's seen enough blood already. Nobody's finding anybody. Don't worry. I'll find you. You can't hide for long. Well, you say that, Same but. Again. Ah! They were right. Ah, uh, they were right. I was wrong about everything. <laughs> Get out of my way. Here's an arrow for you. Let's go up here, go upstairs, hide in my hidey hole. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that's a first for me ever. I don't think I've ever used flash bombs in Thief before. But we're just rolling with the punches today. I just want to see what we can get away with. I didn't realize they were that effective. You can actually get away from people who are uh, pursuing you in Thief. I had no clue. I usually just quick uh, quick load because I'm just like, oh, it's over. But I was just like, you know what? They're already selected in my inventory. Let's just give it a try. And uh, they worked, so. They're still pursuing. I think it's time to eat some snacks. Say, how can I be out of snacks? I picked up like so much food earlier. All right, we're gonna make a new save. Okay. <gasps> Let's see if I can get the drop on one of those guys. See, with the gamma up, it's a little harder to tell where the shadows are. Just gotta sneak up on this, uh, this guy right here, real quiet like. Real quiet like. That's how I got caught last time in the stairwell.
Alright, we're gonna make another hard save. We're gonna see if we can take care of that guy. Who's making all that noise out there? A bank? How many of these do I have? Twelve. Alright. I think it's time to start using a few of these. Don't forget, guys, you can't take it with you. And this is a really good introductory level to, like, all the things you need to know to play this game. Like, stay away from tile. Destroy all the banners. Nice. Does this lead? Yeah, his house is a bit of a maze in places. I thought those were the coolest thing ever when I was a kid. I was like, no fucking way. Water arrows? I, I thought all the arrows were cool in this game. Funny thing is, you can actually aggro those guys. They'll open the gate and come in. So you gotta be sort of careful in here. This is one of the early rooms I was in. To all staff, the sir will be taking his dinner and evening out tonight. His Okay, so domestics and manservants have the night free. Housekeep will be expected to finish the quarters and the general polish. The house guard is not to find this an opportunity to sh shirk and lapses will be brought up with the sir, Cedric. Sounds like Cedric is a snitch. And you know what snitches get. Uh, probably better accommodations than most because uh, they snitch on everybody. That's why snitches existed. I like this corner. It's like, yes, you can't see me. Ah! This goes back to the area where the, all the people are talking and sleeping and snoring and stuff. Yeah. I have no reason to go back down there. Okay, so, I mean, I think we've pretty much cleared most of it out. Uh, let's just check our objectives. I think we're pretty much done. I mean, I know there's a couple more things we can go grab, so we're going to look for them, but um, this is mostly it. I mean, if you've played this level a bunch, you know that it's not the biggest level in the universe. I'm going to see if there's anything in that pool. No. <gasps> Take all the banners down, don't forget. Okay, got that, got that, got that. Yeah, we've been there. Been here, open this. Let's get this goblet. Take down that tapestry, just in case. Okay, everything looks good around here. I'm just gonna save real quick and take out this one. Oh yeah, this one that you can't take out. I remember standing there for like an hour last time trying to take it out. I took all the guards out and I've grabbed everything uh, yeah I think that's it folks we uh, we definitely showed Lord Bafford 
Forgot how little loot there was in this one. You know what? Did we take out that tapestry though? Yeah, we did. Okay. No, we've discovered pretty much everything, so we're good. Let's just uh, get out of. Oh, yeah, this library. That's Only what I was looking for. reads them are if it's just for show. I feel like that sometimes. Melody Bafford, speak Cezel to Jeannie, did you? Drebeck and the Hammerhearts have been afoot, a skulk, a frettin' about grabbing many a one to vanish in the cold stone down below their forgy chained cells. Tooks they your dealer, Tarkis, in the clutches night pa nights past, and two patrons as well, named of Lizelle and Rianne, scupped, as, uh, scupped up as they left, and these not the first, cries Jeannie. Jeannie is like a recurring character. I think she's a... Uh, a house servant that's just mentioned in all of the thief games. Little wonder then if Drekman grows sparse come these days. Of course the lack of blame to one hand, but I give Ginny a firm understandsy. Blood and doom and the whole book, so he'll be learning him and, and he can about how to turn the hammers off him, never you fear. About your Victoria, nothing yet. Walk she an inch above the ground for all the dirt of her footprint I have I found. Dominic. I didn't mean to go Irish with that, uh, I just, I was trying to do the pagan thing with that, these boys, the beegsy peasy wheezy, and I just, it just turned into Irish, so I apologize. And not even like, Irish Irish, that was awful, whatever that was. Lord Bafford, a recent delivery of antiquities from Bond contains several items which we felt might be of interest to you. Descriptions follow, but you're welcome to drop by our shop to examine them, or our other goods in person. An ornamental scepter, three feet in length. The body of the stave is weirwood, carved in the st star and dot pattern. Six, in six inches from the ferrule and five inches from the grip are bound with burnished copper overlaid with an ink and glaze, uh, crack... Kader? I've never seen that word before. Varnish. The crowning feature of this magnificent piece, however, is the six-inch teardrop-cut cloud stone, one of the finest of its type we have seen. A treasure box of two feet by three feet of silver birchwood, the lid of inweight purlin and onyx, in a maze pattern carved into the wood. The feet are lion paws, each clutching a crystal globe. The inside of the box contains two principal compartments, one with glass shelves and one without. Beneath the compartments is a lockable two-inch false bottom for your most valuable treasures. Grimworth and De Perrin, fine antiquities and precious relics. Hmm. That sounds like something we should go look for. False bottom treasure chest. With stuff for me to take. I don't know what's down there. This looks like somebody's, somebody important's room. There's a crown, a bunch of silver, but no treasure chest yet. I don't remember if it was the if you can do it in this one or Thief 2 that introduced like the idea of stealing paintings. And of course, of course. You just have to check. You have to do the due diligence. Due diligence. Also, Garrett's costume is a little bit weird in this one. Oh, I have been here. Then we're gonna try and go... Is there anything in the bath? Don't think so. I think this is the fastest I've ever walked on a tile floor in the entirety of every time I've ever played a Thief game. I think this is a secret staircase that leads to the treasure chest. I can't be certain, though. And of course, it's groaning and moaning like something creepy. It's the thing about Thief. Even when things aren't creepy, they're always groaning and moaning and all sorts of horrific sounds are pouring out of them. Yeah, I think this is the way. Three twenty-four thirty-four, two thousand three hundred forty-two cash pits. Uh, Sunny Fair, three seven hundred thirty-four interest payments. Sunny Fair, four hundred sixty-one Ramirez. Sunny Fair, one hundred fifty-three girls shopping. Blah blah blah. Dreckman, Fendon, Fendon. 
What the hell's going on with Drekbin? Even if Ginny's grafting, he damn well ought to be more subtle than this. If it's not turned around in another week, I'll toss it up to Ramirez as a breach. Okay, so, like, I feel like there are, like, secret tunnel. Like, I know there's, like, a secret tunnel or something. Right? Just got another key. Um, with, a uh, another treasure chest. This is gonna look insane. Having a seizure. All right. That sound is so loud. It just gets under my skin. I'm like, oh. All right. I have been here before. I've done this. I guess we're not gonna find that treasure chest. Maybe it's in here with his other uh, crap. Nope. Well, that may just be a piece of loot. I'm just not gonna find this time around. We might go back downstairs just to double check everything downstairs, make sure we didn't miss anything. But I'm pretty sure that's it. You know? I guess this guy's a hammerite. Let's just double check over here to make, make sure we didn't miss any rooms or anything. This one looks good. Uh, this one looks... Like, have we been down here? Yeah, we've been down here. There's uh, unconscious people. Yep, been in there. Remember all of this. place we haven't been is where that drunk guard is you know let's go see if he's still there maybe there's a way around him I feel like he's guarding the entrance to the secret uh, thing we'll go this way Yes, maybe, maybe this way. Nope, nothing here. I could try going back downstairs again, just in case. We missed something. staircase down here all right we'll go just back down here just in case I don't necessarily think there is anything oh god damn it <sighs> see this is why I'm so neurotic about saving garbage like that Send carefully this time. Alright. Seriously, I, like, we totally combed this entire place for the false bottom uh, chest. I mean, like, I would have seen it. Unless there was a door I couldn't open before, maybe? That's the only thing I can think of.
that's the room. No, I don't think that's it. Well, all right. We'll just head out. We'll get ready for the next mission. It's conservation of momentum with Garrett. That's so weird. I have to, you know what? I, one of these days I'm going to look that up. Like, where the hell is that stupid uh, false bottom chest they're talking about here? This will suffice. Yep. Excellent. Objective completed. Boom, boom, Before death came, the liars were made to feast upon the hands of the thieves, and the thieves were made to ingest the tongues of their liar brothers, and we praised the master builder for his judgments, the Hammer Book of Tenets. I went to Cuddy's place to deliver the scepter, but Cuddy wasn't there. He'd been arrested by the Hammerites. Apparently they didn't approve of his occupation, and I doubt they approve of mine. So hopefully they'll never catch sight of me when I break him out of their prison. Which is what I'm going to do. They're holding Cuddy in a mining complex carved out of a quarry. The quarry's flooded, but the hammers still work the top-level mines and have converted part of the complex into a penitentiary for those who violate their tenants. An associate of mine was confined there and has provided me with a map. It would be difficult to get in by way of the main gate, but there is another option. The mines break the surface of a hill south of the quarry. I'll drop into the mines and head for the prison, which will be found somewhere uphill and to the north. The hammers don't venture into these lower mine levels because they're reputed to be haunted. I'd rather not have to do this job, but Cuddy's a reliable fence and I don't appreciate the hammerites abducting him. And he owes me money for the Bafford job. Okay. Difficulty expert. Your map doesn't show the way through the mines, so you're going to have to scout around or make your uh, to make your way to where they hold the prisoners. Cuddy still owes you for the Bafford job. Break him out and you'll get your cash. You've had your eye on Basso, the boxman's sister, for a while now. If you break him out of Craig's club... Uh, Cragscliff, she'll probably be very grateful. Uh, is it the beggar borrowed your lucky hand of glory, and knowing him, he probably hid it from the hammer's body. Hammers. Uh, hid it from the hammer's body search in ways you'd rather not think about. Get it back. <laughs> this is, this watch. Uh, there's bound to be some pricey religious icons in any hammer complex. Try to come out with at least a thousand worth of their stuff. Escape from the prison with Cuddy and Basso the Boxman. True professional doesn't leave a mess. Don't kill anyone. Nice. And once again... And... I'll take, uh... And, uh... One of these. Actually, you know what? I'll take... Here we go.
That seems good. Moss arrows are always nice. Well, it's a little bit late for me. I was hoping to get more uh, gameplay done for this part of the Let's Play, but at least we got started. Um, once again, daytime mission. Uh, very kind of cool. Crags West Cleft Prison. Uh, once I get out of the mine, I'm okay, but I really don't like dealing with zombies in this game. So this is going to be a fun playthrough. But anyways, I think that's going to be it for tonight's stream. Thank you guys for joining. Oh, before I leave the stream, I am going to mess. Why do we keep saying stream? For the recording. For the recording. Uh, so for tonight's Let's Play, but uh, I just wanted to save real quick uh, before I stopped it. So tune in next time where I will probably be doing much more. Probably three or f probably three missions for the next one. Um, so uh, thanks for uh, checking this out, and I hope you guys enjoy the Let's Play.